Hey there and welcome to Painting the Aceros and this is going to be a bit of a break from the way I've been painting everything else and first up this is going to get painted white and I'm going to introduce all the light sources because I want the light to be sort of shining through from within as these are meant to be the aspects of Aleph and I want them to be very much um, like luminescent mechanical dolls um, quite a lot of inspiration clearly from a lot of anime um, but also from looking at Angel Veraldus's work, I uh, really love some of that stuff. So I thought I'd try a different way of doing it where I start off by painting everything white, introducing all the luminous stuff, and then I start painting the panels on afterwards so that I'm leaving the luminous stuff in all the gaps. And uh, you'll understand what I mean shortly, I hope. So I'll be back in a second with my layer of white and some kind of luminous, it might be even a fade rather than just a single luminous colour. Um, I did like the pink on the marat that I saw done by Angel. Here we have it then, our explosion of neon colour. My rainbow. Put this on pretty thickly. Um, this is the fluorescent range from the model colour. Uh, or Vallejo model colour. And as you can see, it's pretty intense, and it's pretty bright, and uh, it behaves not like normal paint. Uh, it's a bit more um, gloopy. It's a little bit more like, almost like PVA glue, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, when doing the blend here, I just did a straight wet and wet blend. Uh, also, this paint takes quite a while to dry, so. Um, had to leave it a bit longer than normal and some points like when I was blending the orange into the yellow I had to mix some of the orange and yellow together in the palette the green into the yellow, yellow that was that was fine to do it on the miniature uh, the pink into the orange again I also had to mix some uh, pink and orange together in the palette just to create a bit more of an even blend so next up, I, I'm going to start introducing darker colour, and I'm just trying to decide what colours to use. Um, I've got a red and white faction, I've got a purple and green faction, uh, which also uses grey. So I don't want to use white, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do hmm, a colour range, which you will discover in a moment once I've decided what it is. Okay, so here we have it then. Um, this is my Vallejo Game Extra Opaque Heavy Charcoal layer. And this has taken a long time. My advice if you're going to do this is go very slowly, take your time, and um, maybe don't even do it in one sitting. I've just done it in one sitting and. Um, my eyes started to go a bit funny and my motor control started to go so my painting started to deteriorate a little bit towards the end hence the ankles and feet are a bit messier than the rest but I think the effect is pretty good so next up it's just going to be introducing the base colour for the light tone so um, I'm not quite sure again, um, we'll find out in a minute, but I'm either going to go for a sort of golden brown, uh, yellow ochre, which I'll turn into a white, or I might use a grey and make it a light grey, like a light blue grey, very pale blue grey. haven't quite decided yet, but we shall see in a moment when I'm done. Here we have it then, all based up and ready to go now, based up, base coated up and ready to go now for the highlighting stages and finishing off process. Obviously it isn't going to happen right this instant. So the bottom half has just been covered in a mixture of um, charcoal blue, yeah, heavy charcoal grey and heavy blue. Again both from the Vallejo game extra opaque ranges. And that, I'll come back around to a face again in a minute, will end up going blue grey or heavy blue grey in colour. Um, so I'm going for a 
dark grey, light grey outfit really. Um, and I'm probably going to make the face white, although I have thought about doing like a dark stripe down the middle of her face so the central face plate is darker than the rest if I just So you can see. And there we have it. So cool mini, cool idea or not. Um I confess it looked better, I think, before I put the bottom half on, but we never know until we do these things. Some respects I wish I just left it like that and painted white straight over the top, which yeah, was an option but I decided against it and I'm gonna pay the price. So call me or not, you decide. I uh, hope you found this interesting, uh, useful to your painting and maybe found a technique that might interest you, although I will point out it's very labour intensive um, to do the, the little black hexes down her arms and everything. I think it took like four hours. Um, painstaking. If you are going to do it, take your time, don't mess it up. And remember to keep a second paintbrush on hand and use your paint slightly watered down or at least uh, on a, use a wet palette and a wet brush so that the paint's very fluid. This is so that when you make mistakes, because invariably sooner or later you will make a mistake, you have a paintbrush on hand for removing the paint and cleaning it back up. So there's quite a lot of um, cleanup involved in this process as well as actual painting. So thank you for watching, have a good one and take care. Bye bye.